Satya, I'd like to start with you. When I look at uh, NPCI and when I look at UPI figures, for instance, it's something like 8 billion transactions per month. Per month yeah. Now, that's a humongous figure, and that requires a lot of technology at the back of uh, how you want to make uh, UPI uh, run seamlessly. Uh, because everybody with a QR code, I mean, right from a guy who wants to buy vegetables for five rupees, right to a mobile a guy who wants to recharge, to every practically inconceivable thing that we had is now being run with QR codes and with uh, UPI. Eight billion transactions, as I said, per month, that's something humongous. And Satyan, how is the technology handling that kind of scale and fraud? Yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, so <laughs> I think before uh, starting off on you know the questions, uh, I really want to say uh, the the key important uh, thing about uh, NPCI is it's one of the world's leading uh, digital infrastructure, which is available in India and at a very high and it compute at a very high scale. It's one of the most most uh, you know uh, work, working infrastructure which is uh, which operates at a scale. So that, that's the key thing, you know, which excites everyone, uh, including all the countries and uh, stuff. So that's that's a key there. Uh, so when we talk about technology uh, in the operational space and that too in an Indian public sector space, uh, I think there is a, there is one one important question which need to be answered is uh, you know how do you operate at a scale, right? And uh, how do you uh, actually take a lot of these innovations to operate at a scale? So I think that's that's kind of what we do. Uh, you know, my team at NPCI, as well as uh, along with ThoughtWorks, uh, you know, we have been doing uh, this at a scale, uh, building the whole engineering infrastructure. So I would want to c actually call off it as a, you know, there is this, there is a very important element which is called as AI engineering, uh, which is very much needed to actually bring all the innovations. Uh, uh, which we're talking about and everyone talked about uh, to be in this space and to also operate at a scale. So, so just just looking back the journey, uh, how we actually went through, uh, I think I, I can completely relate to a lot of the earlier talks and a lot of people I mean, who actually talked about this. Uh, uh, just, to, just to give you uh, the thing, I, I think you know very important aspect, I could completely relate to what Sudeep was saying, I mean, fail, uh, fast, fail multiple times, and uh, we actually did that. We we had to actually go through that journey. We failed fast along, and the team at uh, NPCI ThoughtWorks, everyone. I mean, we we had to actually go through. We had to convince the, our senior stakeholders to actually come back on that. Uh, and we talked about uh, the energy. Professor Jinjinwala talked about the energy. Uh, the team who had the who was there. They were really passionate about, uh, you know, hey, what we are building and what we are building for India. Uh, you know, that that includes everyone, from the developer to the, you know, leads who are actually leading. Uh, Satya, and I'd like to in uh, interject over here. It, could you give us some, uh, a couple of examples on the AI engineering part of it? What went into creating such a behemoth and, you know, ensuring these kind of seamless transactions? Yeah, definitely. So uh, getting into that, so. I think you know uh, the very important uh, key challenges uh, you know which we fa face is uh, you know when it comes to the UPI ecosystem, the very important stuff is around the fraud detection. So it's basically you know one of the very key important points you know which we actually we important goals you know which we all want to achieve. And uh, if you look at the news now, uh, you can actually see that there are about 95,000 cases fraud cases. I mean which are still reported at UPI and stuff, but this is above and beyond, I mean, where we are processing around uh, 8 billion transactions, uh, you know, per month and stuff. So it's a, it's a kind of a percentage, a small percentage, which we are tr still trying to address uh, in this space. So what we, what we, we followed a framework, and it's kind of an engineering framework. It's a combination of many things. So the first one, uh, you know, we wanted an ability to process data uh, at a scale. So we wanted that ability. That's the first one. The second one, we wanted to pro we wanted to process data real time. I want to say gone are the days where we are doing a post mortem where you know something has happened and you know you you are working on it for ten days and you come back. I mean we we want to be real time. Third, we want I think uh, you know we talked about this viral guns. We talked about this uh, you know bringing in the experimentation culture, the innovation culture within the team. And the fourth 
is about providing a continuous customer experience. Like if you look at it, I mean, all these POCs looks pretty cool, but when you actually put it in a production scale like an UPI, uh, you, and if you have achieved something, you want to provide a continuous customer experience, which means the engineering which you have put through, that needs to sustain, and that needs to sustain, you know, the, the power, I mean, the 10x growth. Say, for example, after COVID, there was close to about a 10x or 20x growth in which you pay went through. And we had to actually support, you know, those kind of cases. So it's basically these four elements, you know, which, you know, we work together as a team um, uh, at NPC and ThoughtWorks to actually bring in the whole thing. So just starting off on the scale, what we, the, the ma main important thing and, uh, you know, sort of design the system. The other piece is uh, actually Satyan's team had also worked on creating a workbench at UIDI and some of that learnings also came into play when you are doing an NPCI. Uh, you know, th all of these are, you know, billion dollar transactions. I think that's the second. Third is all of this uses open source. Um, and, and, you know, that's a key aspect um, that definitely the government puts a lot of focus on and that's something that ThoughtWorks is also very passionate about. So all of these technologies uses open source. Um, and the other part is, while we have to scale, um, I think the team started with the smaller ones, right? I mean, UPI is the big one, but before UPI there is AEPS and there are other ones, right? So you test on all these things and then you then start scaling to UPI. I think these are some of the aspects as well that the team sort of worked on and then um, got here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Satyan, I think now I'd like to shift gear a little in, because in the interest of time, because definitely. I know that we can speak about AI engineering till the cows come home. But um, when we talk about the broader digital public goods uh, infrastructure, that entire space, I mean, you could restrict yourself to finance and we not could have a broader perspective. Uh, so how is AI and generative AI being used in the spaces to leverage the kind of, you know, achieve the scale, solve the uh, problems of fraud, as you said, because I think 55% of the frauds in the digital payments uh, space is taking place on the UPI. That, those are the kind of reports that we have. So, but how is AI and generative AI, how are they being used uh, to leverage this entire digital public so, space? So Innovations. I, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So I think uh, the generative AI space and very specifically on the fraud management, uh, this is a very strong case for us and, you know, we, we are in an mental phase to see you know how that can come in because uh, we uh, currently if you want to actually detect this fraud what we do is we actually create a lot of machine learning models or deep learning models which are and an ensemble of models you know which actually gets through but I think now with generative AI coming in the thought process is moving a little bit for you know on a different note saying hey you know given I give these uh, criteria saying here uh, you know a customer with these uh, payment space customer with this, uh, you know, transaction ballot, and there is so much of signals, I mean, you can provide to the AI, and to see, and then identify, you know, whether it's a fraud. I mean, and uh, I think, you know, like, uh, if you take an example of Bloomberg, GPT, and all those things, I mean, the, everyone is trying to actually build the context, or domain context, on top of, you know, the generative AI space, and I think that, that I mean, we were seeing a very good interaction, as well as, uh, you know, very good positive response in that space. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I'll probably take a slightly larger view. And I think the India Commons has probably stolen a march over the India corporate in this case. Uh, Satyan's team, for example, had worked on the Jugalbandi app as well, um, you know, where uh, Bhashni along with GPT 3.5 has been integrated in WhatsApp and Telegram. Uh, and Vinod, you know, can you tell us a little more about the Jugalbandi app? <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> and I thought it's Probably, you know, it's... it's uh, how many people in the audience know about the Jugalbandi app? One, two, three, four, five. I can see about less than ten hands. Okay, so so uh, it's a very simple app that, you know, just search for Satya Nadala. He keeps talking about this uh, everywhere. But the app, basically, what it does is, if you are um, someone in hinterland India and you want to know what government schemes are uh, available for you, given your state, um, you can go to WhatsApp, there's a certain number. You can ask the app, uh, you can ask WhatsApp in your language, be it Hindi, Marathi, Punjabi, etc. And the app will go check on that uh, mygov.scheme.in uh, and then give it back to the user in the context of what uh, he or she has asked. For example, if he says, I'm a 20 year old uh, graduate unemployed, what schemes are available for me? He can ask that in Hindi or Tamil. He'll give an answer to him, to that person in Hindi or Tamil. So, so, so that's the Jugalbandi app. So that's, you know, that's the first production scenario of 
generative AI already in place that, you know, the India Commons is using, uh, in a sense, Bharat is using. The other, very interestingly, you know, one of our product uh, managers, not Satyan's team, one of our product managers, he works with ONDC, and uh, he basically used GPT to create a live dashboard that tracks the Yatri app's uh, rides uh, on an hourly basis. And he did that over a weekend. It would have taken maybe a couple of our engineers two weeks to do, but he just did that over a weekend. Um, so, so, you know, that talks about productivity gains, or rather, you know, what do we need data engineers for at one level? But uh, it also talks about the fact that India Commons has started using some of Gen AI. So this is not just hype, it's in use. Uh, and we've got another 15 uh, other conversations we're having with our clients in India, and globally within ThoughtWorks about 50 uh, conversations uh, at various stages right now. So it's all happening. We'll start seeing a lot of these things in production in the next few months. And this question is posed to both of you. Innovation is good. Tech, technology, I think it's proven. But all these things come at a cost. So at this point in time, if I look at even NPC as uh, per se or the UPI transactions, banks have sort of put a limit on them on a daily. And I think all of us know that there's, it's not a constraint of technology per se. So could you just you know, shed some uh, in, uh, light on that? Sure, I think uh, there is a, co so I think, um, um, I think Professor Junjun Wala was also mentioning, you know, it sort of is connected with, we could talk about energy, what it means to the climate, but it's also about the cost of transaction, right? Um, and and uh, when you have to make, UPI makes four hops to make a UPI transaction. I know it hits uh, two banks at various points in time. I don't think banks were ready to take that kind of traffic in the first place. You know, NPCI built a huge infrastructure, but the banks didn't know that, you know, it's going to come. So the entire ecosystem needs to build up. And if the entire ecosystem needs to build up, it has to be efficient for this ecosystem to be able to do this as well. So we believe uh, some of the reasons why some of these limits are also being put is, what is the cost of transaction the, uh, that, that, you know, all the ecosystem partners have to take? And it's, it's, a, it's a question out there. It's a software and a hardware problem to solve. Um, and and uh, yeah, there are various ways to address it. And definitely, uh, I think uh, you know, to add on to that, uh, there is also this whole ecosystem because everything needs to be on on-prem, open source, as Vinod was saying. And you know, if we are able to, like uh, the whole ecosystem, which is connected to the UPI or anything, we need to scale towards how UPI is scaling. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's not going to tie up. Uh, so I think that's where the whole major cost goes in. Uh, with respect to the banks or anything, that is not what just the gateway cost. It's basically every all the ecosystem who are connected to that needs to accommodate that change. Uh, yeah, that's that's a very important cost to be looked at. I think it's a very important point that you made about open source because people sometimes you know associate it with their open source won't be able to solve these kind of problems. Exactly. And I time True. and again reiterate that even Facebook's Llama is open source. So True. that's a classic example of yeah. genuine AI. I would really you know say that I mean uh, the open the way we need to actually look at the open source uh, needs a change. I mean we we operate at the scales like uh, I mean uh, what, just to give you one example. Uh, uh, UPI transactions, the machine learning model needs to do an inference in less than 20 to 30 milliseconds. You can imagine the, you know, the, the compute and uh, the, core, you know, the algorithms which have gone into actually make this happen. So that, that's a scale, you know, way we are operating. And, and it's, the same, it's the same for UID as well. You know, when somebody is trying to do a KYC or a, you know, authentication or enrollment, right? So they have to do very quick dedupe to make sure that, you know, there's not a person who's already got an Aadhaar or something like that. And it also has to happen in milliseconds. So, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of compute power. And, uh, and even to add upon just on the other, I think, you know, there's one more uh, towards, you know, how do you even make the intelligence at the edge level, at the transaction centers <laughs> level and stuff. So I think those are the, you know, challenges uh, we're still going through. As everyone is saying, I think, you know, we were just, you know, on the journey, and there are challenges always being posed at X level, like, hey, no, we need to process at 20X, 30X. Can you actually move on? So great. Thank you, Satyan and Vidyot, for these insights. And I hope the audience also enjoyed. Please give them a big hand. Thank you. Thank you.